So now I'm going to start with you because the action really was largely in bonds. You're our fixed income person. Well, how do you explain how the bond market reacted to the news this week? So, you know, I wish it was an equity market, equity week, but it is a bond market week, clearly. I'd say the type of volatility we're seeing in uh, the Treasury yield curve, it is, it is very interesting. There is a certain amount, in my mind, dissonance. The, the bond market is asking, pleading for the Fed to cut rates. However, if I look at what is being priced in by the bond market, the number of rate cuts being priced in, it just doesn't make sense. It only makes sense if you're anticipating a really drastic recession triggered by a massive banking crisis. But if that's the case, then the remainder of the bond market doesn't make much sense. I'm talking about credit markets, for example. We haven't seen spreads blow out. All the action really seems to be driven off market participants being unhappy with the Fed not essentially doing what we've seen the Fed do, frankly, since the global financial crisis, which has used overwhelming force at the first sign of wobbles in any particular piece of the financial sector. So, Dennis, is the equity market basically having a big debate with the bond market right now? Because the bond markets are saying, we're going to have cuts this, week, this year, even though Jay Powell keeps saying we're not going to have cuts, but the bond market seems to think it is. If really we were, wouldn't that signal something really bad going on, and shouldn't that be hurting equities right now? You would think, theoretically, that it should be a pretty big drag on equities. I think one of the reasons why equities aren't reacting is because a lot of what's happening in the bond market could be a hedge against a really bad outcome. And at the end of the day, unless the near-term economic data is falling off a cliff, what it clearly is not doing, lower rates are not going to be terrible for equities until it becomes very obvious that you're going to see significant earning degradation. And so there's some chance that, you know, the banking system gets, uh, or people have a lot more confidence in the banking system. And if that happens, then deposit risk uh, goes away or is significantly reduced. You don't have this drastic tightening of financial conditions or lending standards. And if that were to happen, then the economy can weather it, and maybe even with a lower rate outlook. And that combination at least stabilizes equities until they have a little bit more uh, information. Because again, the earnings outlook is not terrible to start the year, and that's a really important point. So, so now the, the news was not just about what the Fed did or what Jay Powell said this week. We also have this overhang of, of some confusion, even some fear in parts of the banking industry. Was that reflecting the bond market? Did the bonds react to all of that that was going on? To some extent, but the reality is, you know, if we, you know, you started off talking about the banking crises, I would almost take issue with the idea that there is a crisis as such, because I would really distinguish what we are seeing today in banks from what we saw when we had a true banking crisis, a financial crisis, say 2007 8. We have to recognize that what we're looking at are banks which, by and large, are extremely solvent. If you look at banks like SVB, for example, the problem was the most fundamental mismatch of duration. We're not looking at deep, strange, unvaluable securities where you can't figure out how much they're worth. You're looking at government treasuries. You're looking at U.S. treasuries. You're looking at mortgage bonds, where we know the value of the asset by the minute. So I think that's one thing to keep in mind. Every time we hear, I hear about the banking crisis and how this is spreading and there's something catastrophic waiting, I would actually argue that what we heard from Jay Powell, indeed what we heard from Janet Yellen, is broadly on point. If they see banks having runs, and remember, in banking, we're in the business, people are in the business in banking of borrowing short and lending long, deposits fund loans. It's what banking is. I just think that what they are doing, which is trying to separate out what to do about the banks from interest rates, up to a point, this is a very sensible thing to do. So, Dennis, whether the banks are in a crisis or not, I guess it matters whether they think they're in a crisis or could go into a crisis because it really affects their willingness to lend to some corporations and that could really affect equities. That is what the problem is for equities over time. And what we don't know is how much of that tightening of lending standards will actually show up over time. Um, 
no one really knows. Um, a tightening of lending standards is going to be, quote, unquote, off the screen. So you're not going to be able to pick it up in the typical type of financial conditions indices that we would normally look at, you know, on a Bloomberg screen. So it's a really unknown. But, you know, we did a search today of Google Trends FDIC insurance. And after a giant spike up, it's come down aggressively. So the broader public is probably not so focused on this as much anymore. I realize we all are on Wall Street. There's a lot of people in California that are. And so if you get past that risk, which is the deposit flight risk, um, yes, banks will have tighter lending standards. That might mean that the Fed doesn't have to tighten as much on a go forward basis. In aggregate, you still have the same outcome, slowing economy, lower inflation. But it doesn't mean a recession in the next six months. And if you don't have a recession in the next six months, then you have the case for equities to at least be stable and to have a significant bounce back in some of the more cyclical areas of the market. Sonal Desai. I, and Dennis, I should, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Sonal, please. No, I was just going to just say to Dennis that, in fact, that's ex I've seen so much of talk about how Jay Powell talked about raising rates just two days, you know, that rates needed to go up a lot more two days before SVB broke. And then we saw that when we saw the new SEPs, the top peak rate is still where it was in December. So essentially what we're seeing is a substitution of higher rates, which would have contracted demand for loans more yes. with tighter lending standards, as you said, which constrains the supply of credit. So overall, I do think it's too premature to assume that we're going to see this massive meltdown of the economy on the back of what we've seen in the past two weeks. I think that's a really important point. And I don't think investors, broadly speaking, are doing a good job of thinking about different time frames. We can all talk about six months forward and the tightening of lending standards and what that means for the economy, but it's never 100% that you're going to go into a recession. So if you want to invest on a recession call today in equities, it could work out over a 12-month basis, but you could also have significant bear market cyclical rallies in between if it appears exactly to your point that this tightening of lending standards takes a very long time to show up. And that's where you end up with some cyclical bounces in the economy. I mean, you probably know this better than I do, but the economy has a lot of momentum right now. I mean, I get that this headline risk can be an issue, but you've got core personal consumption expenditures running at a 3.7% annualized rate. The drag from housing is about to actually go away. I mean, like, so... Forget about what can happen a year from now, but there's a lot of things that can happen within that time frame that leads to these aggressive rallies that, quite frankly, put investors out of business if you're on the wrong side of it.